Hi, welcome back to the course. In this video, we will continue on discussing with the JPQL queries. So in this video, we will see how to write the JPQL query for deleting the employee record. Assume that we have a scenario where we need to delete employee record based on the employee name and we are going to do this by writing the JPQL queries. So let's begin. So I'm inside the employee repository. I will just write the JPQL query. So let's start with at query annotation and we will write the JPQL query. We know that the JPQL query uh, will start with from, but this is not a select query. This is a delete query. So we will start with delete, delete from table name. Instead of table name, we will use the entity name because the table name is mapped with the entity employee where name is equal to we need to provide the variable name so I will provide the variable name as colon name and now we are going to write the method which is delete employee by name string name and the return type will be so remember one thing when we are writing the jpql query for updating deleting or creating then the return type will be either void or either int okay we should give only these two return values that is int or void so in this case i will just return int i'm going to explain what this integer will do so whenever this query has been executed then this method is going to return an integer this integer is nothing but the number of counts that this query has affected okay let's say if you have a uh, employee names shankar in the table two records then if this query executed then this is going to return the count of two because it has deleted two records that's matching with the records in the database so this will return two so basically this integer will do is it will return the number of the counts that this query has affected if it is affected 100 employees records then this will return 100 that's the whole idea of this okay void it will not do anything but in this case we are going to return an integer we want to know the count of the records has been affected by this query all right so now let's save this now we have created the jpql query for the delete method for deleting an employee now let's go to the service let's quickly create a method delete by employee name this will take the employee name let's save this let's go to the service implementation let's quickly overwrite the method we will just call the repository method employee repository dot delete employee by name and we will pass the employee name so let's save this let's go to the controller let's quickly create a new handler method this will be delete mapping slash employees slash delete and name so this is delete employee by name we're going to make use of the add path variable annotation to retrieve the employee name from the URI and we're going to call the service method which is delete 
employee by name and of course we know that this is going to return the integer and instead of the list of employees we're going to change it to integer this will also return an integer awesome so what I'll do is for this I'm going to attach a message that is number of records affected or number of records deleted okay in that case we need to change this to string and i'll change this to string awesome okay so with this changes let's save our file and let's go to the postman and i'll quickly create a new request add a request this will be delete mapping and the request name will be delete by name and we are going to make use of the environment variables which is url slash employees slash the name of the employee which is Bushan and when I click on this send we should get the message but for some reasons method not allowed obviously this is delete mapping and employees slash delete slash name let's go back and see okay i should add delete delete slash bushan employees slash delete slash bushan yes it's good click on this send we should get the message okay all right all right i got it what happened let's go to the repository okay so remember one thing whenever we are writing the jpql queries that is for modifying queries then we should annotate this with the add modifying annotation add modifying annotation let me import this okay so remember whenever we are writing a query the jpql queries for deleting updating and creating at the time we have to annotate that method with the add modifying annotation otherwise it will throw an exception okay just like we have seen okay so remember that we should use at modifying annotations for modifying queries okay for the select queries we don't have to write, uh, annotate this with the at modifying annotation but for other modifications like delete update and recreate we should annotate that with the at modifying annotation with this let's save our changes and also we need to add a one more annotations but let's actually test it without that annotation let me go to the postman and when i click on this send obviously again we get the uh, error that is because we have to annotate with add transactional as well transactional so let me import this we have a two transactional one is java x dot transaction and from the org dot spring framework make sure to choose from the org dot spring work dot transaction annotation instead of java x dot persistence so with this let's save our changes this time our rest endpoint should work let's verify finger cross and let's click on this send obviously the record has been deleted one number of records deleted okay so let's try for one more record uh, we know that we have a record which is shankar prashant and chetan let's actually delete the chetan let me copy this and i'm going to delete the chetan record when i click on this send again we should get the message which is one number of record deleted if I go to the read employees, we should not see Chetan and Bhushan. Yes, we do not have the records Bhushan and Chetan. 
okay so remember whenever we are writing a jpql queries for modifications or the modification queries like delete update and create we should annotate that with the add modifying annotation and also we have to annotate with the add transactional annotation and make sure to import the add transactional from the org.spring framework package instead of java x.persistence package all right so now we have learned how to write the jpql queries for the select queries as well as the delete queries you can try for update and create and in the next video we will discuss about the relationship with one to many many to one and many to many relationship with the data jpa i will see you in the next video